Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A big malolele to you all from Tonga. It is an honor to be part of this important occasion. The ocean has been sacred right from the beginning of time, as the creation narrative tells us in the book of Genesis, that God was its creator. When we were kids, we often go out to the beach for a swim, especially on holiday times. But we were often warned by our parents not to make too much noise at the beach or at sea. And the reason was because the waves may get angrier and stronger and harm our lives. It seemed very true for us despite being kids at the time. The more noise we made, the bigger the waves seemed to become. We learned a good lesson that the sea is just like another living creature to be respected. When our men go out fishing and throwing out their nets or their lines, they not only talk to each other, but they even talk down to the fish in the sea, calling out traditional names on them. It may seem just a humor, but it has become part of the ritual, a habit, a way of life, to just talk to these living creatures. There is a certain sense of mutual friendliness and tenderness between fishermen and sea creatures underwater. I recall as a young boy on calm days when the sea or the lagoon is dead still and crystal clear. I was feeling like being entertained as a child when repeatedly hearing my own echo being carried back and forth in a vibration of sound along the surface of the vast clear ocean. Isn't this like easy sense of playfulness and livelihood freely offered by nature and its natural beauty? The sacredness of the ocean is connected, firstly, to the truth of its divine creator, God himself. And secondly, to the primary purpose it is being made for, the well-being of men and women made in God's image. There is harmony and interconnectedness between God, man, and nature, reflecting a sense of respect in the presence of the sacred. In January 15th this year, a supervolcanic explosion caused much sufferings and destruction to the island and people of Tonga. It was predicted that the accompanying tsunami would have wiped up the entire islands in an instant, but instead it did not happen. Scientists may find some explanation in the future, but for many Tongans, this was a work of divine mercy and divine providence. Like in all other Pacific nations, our cultures, spirituality, and identity all flow together as with the sea tides. We see our lives as living without the clo close connections and relationship between God, ourselves, and nature, between our past, present, and future. Such a profound conviction has to be upheld and maintained, for it is truly sacred. The church has a mandate and divine duty of stewardship and custodian of nature and of God's creation. She is to remain faithful to this call. In her approaches, she is guided with biblical divine principles, which have been well integrated in her so-called church social teaching. Her main inspiration has to be centered on human dignity, the preferential options for the poor, and the vulnerable stewardship and the promotion of the common good. This is a baseline for religious responses to deep sea mining. Pope John Paul II in Ecclesia in Oceania had said in 2001, it was the special responsibility of the governments and peoples of Oceania to assume on behalf of all humanity, stewardship of the Pacific Ocean containing over one half of the Earth's total supply of water. The continued health of this and other oceans is crucial for the welfare of peoples, not only in Oceania, but in every part of the world. In his document Laudato Si, Pope Francis says, this sister now cries out to us because of the harm we have inflicted on her by our irresponsible use and abuse of the goods with which God and endowed her. We have come to see ourselves as her lords and masters entitled to plunder her at will. The violence present in our hearts, wounded by sin, 
is also reflected in the symptoms of sickness in the soil, in the water, in the air, and in all forms of life. Caritas Oceania has documented climate change impacts on Pacific communities, such as more destructive extreme weather events and sea level rise causing erosion, higher tides, and soil salination. Climate change has forced people to move from an atoll based lifestyle to an agricultural based economy, which means additional stress to them and their livelihoods. In Tonga, there are four islands which were relocated, and these coastal fisher families are now forced to be farmers, something that they have no full confidence to do as their source of livelihood. They are being distanced from the ocean, which represents everything for them. And today, perhaps more than ever, Caritas Oceania is concerned with the ocean damage arising from seabed mining, a claim by some as necessary to find the minerals needed to feed the technology required to harness renewable energy. But this seems like diving into the dark Communities in some of the countries backing or standing to be affected by seabed mining are not being adequately informed on what's involved and what the risks are to ocean health and food source. The people need to be appropriately consulted and to know the implication of this industry. Who are these companies and how is this industry going to benefit our people, if at all? We should not be entertaining deep sea mining for its spell doom and destruction to our deep sea ecology and ecosystems. Turning clear blue ocean to a brown black color and polluting water and reef is destroying food sources and livelihoods for local people. This has been the result of the volcanic eruption and consequent tsunami of January 15 in Tonga. The ash fallout covered the whole of Tonga, bearing coastal ecosystems for weeks and months. Interestingly, many Tongans saw the event through the lens of faith and religion. In their minds, it was somehow a blessing in disguise, an opportunity, a call for a moral purification, a time for conversion, an opportunity to re-examine our hearts and minds. Perhaps that this is also the real challenge for the church today in her mission, a consistent and real conversion. Others have seen it as a tough warning and an example for Tonga, that if deep sea mining happens, this will be the reality, a bloom that will rain sediments on all living things, deeming them uneatable for months, even years. Mining in any sorts of form are very destructive. It's unsustainable and it will destroy the environment. There is no way around that. It's just a matter of time before we see the extent of what it can do. Our concern for the ocean stems from our very experience of the poor around the world, especially coastal communities, small island states, and the region of Oceania. We support urgent climate adaptation financed by government and partnered by communities and remote barriers for communities to access climate finance. We would keep up the fight to keep alive the 1.5 degree Celsius Paris Agreement goal and take action to ensure that it is met. We assist to strengthen knowledge sharing across the region, to learn from each other and find common solutions for example, on resilience building and early warning systems. A transformation of our social and economic systems is required in an integrated approach that addresses the interrelated environmental, social and economic, economic crisis we face and restores good relationships between peoples and the earth. We encourage listening to young people, to elders, to indigenous and local peoples, who know their place well, to ensure that all these voices are heard and heeded in problem-solving decision-making and implementation. Creation have given so much for humanity. It provides everything that we need for living. Now is the time for us to act by giving back to nature 
by protecting and saving it from more harm. Climate change has already had a significant impact on ocean and marine ecosystems. It is critical for nations around the world to recognize the urgent need for the conservation, protection, and sustainable use on oceanic, of oceanic biodiversity. We ask to ban further seabed mining and exploration for exploitation. It will damage marine life and ecosystems already under pressure from multiple stresses. Together with our co-partners, the church asks for stronger commitments and actions. From this conference, to strengthen ocean-based action under the UNFCCC multilateral process. We also ask to develop climate response projects based on sound science, indigenous and local knowledge, and with the full participation and involvement of affected communities. Wishing you all well in the rest of the evening. Thank you very much, Malo Pito.